Here we go. This is 2.4. Max, do you have a question? Is it recording? Okay, here we go, here we go. When your hand comes up, I'll call on you. Make it appropriate, I don't want to start all over again, please. So, okay. So, we study derivatives for the rest of the year in this class. And this is the most important day, so I thought this would be good to, before I teach 2.4 on Monday, to add a new section, which is an extra 2.4. And basically, you guys, you guys know how to find the area of a rectangle, don't you? And you know how to find the area of a triangle and a circle, but they invented calculus because, let's say you have hunting land that looks like this, and you're trying to find the area of that hunting land, you can use calculus to come up with the area of that hunting land, because there is no there is no geometrical formula for that, and that's why they invented calculus. So that's what we, it takes us the whole year to come up with the area of that hunting land. It, that's how long it takes to get to my hunting land looks like that. I don't know if my hunting land looks like that, but. There's a river in the hunting land. Just at the border. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so here we go. The first derivative, you're going to learn the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, even the 50th derivative. At one question on the AP test, I'll ask you to find the 50th derivative. So anyway, the first derivative is f prime of x. That little dash stands for derivative. If you don't see the dash, it's just f of x in math, just like you've always learned it, right? But if you see a little dash, it means first derivative. If you see two dashes, it means second derivative. If you see three dashes later on in this book, it'll mean third derivative. It just says F 50 X. It's not going to sit there and give you 50 slash. <laughs> okay. What does the first derivative stand for in math? Basically, it represents the slope of the tangent line somewhere, anywhere on F of X, as long as it's at a point. So, what do we study for the rest of the year? We study slope. We, that's all we do for the rest of the year is study slopes of graphs. And that's what a derivative is, you guys. It's the slope of the tangent line. It's called the derivative. Instead of saying constantly, let's find the slope of the tangent line. And I say it again, let's find the slope of the tangent line. Instead of saying that huge sentence, I just say, let's find the derivative instead. So they call it the derivative. So you need to derive to survive in here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. The limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches zero. I didn't know how to do that, so that's why I had to add that. I didn't know how to put that on here for my notes. This stands for the derivative. The limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h is equal to f prime of x. If you went back to 2.1, the first page, I taught you this on the first page. Do you guys remember on the first page of 2.1? And I said I would go back, I would go back oh, to yeah, 2.4. Yeah. So where did this come from? I'm gonna do it again because you guys forgot 2.1. Here we go again. There's some little x here, and there's some x after this one. And now this, some of you guys were so lost on 2.1, now this will make more sense. There is some f of x, and there's some f of x plus h somewhere there. And I'm going to draw some type of a curve, like that. And I'll, well, that, there's supposed to be a dot there and a dot there. OK, wait till you, if I connect these two dots, which is, I want to make it perfect. If I connect these two dots, 
This is called the secant line. It's called the secant line. Okay? And that gives you the slope between those two points, doesn't it, you guys? Doesn't that give you the slope between those two points? How do you find the slope between those two points? You go y minus y over x minus x, but our y's are not y's. Um, they are f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus x. Divide to the x's on the bottom because there's a negative x and a positive x. Aha! F of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, this is cool. Maybe you might not think. I'm so excited to teach today because this is basically calculus finally. I get to teach you what a derivative is. This is the formula for the slope of the secant line. That's the slope of the secant line. By putting this in front of it, you guys, by putting the limit as h approaches zero is the slope of the tangent line. So as h gets smaller and smaller, as this line gets smaller and smaller, closer and closer to this x, it'll come out to be the tangent line at that spot. As the height gets, as this, as this dot keeps getting closer and closer and closer to that dot, as the height gets smaller and smaller, the secant line ends up turning into the tangent line. And that's, you're not just studying that tangent line, you're gonna also study it here. You're also gonna study it here. You're gonna study it everywhere on this graph, not just at that spot. So, what did I leave you with? We're just gonna study slopes everywhere on a graph. Is that it? That's it. So if you're given something like this on the test, you have to come up and you have to make, you have to, instead of making a long line, they just make little short ones. Is that a tangent line right there, you guys? Is that a tangent line right there? Is that the tangent line right there? Um, tangent line, tangent line, tangent line. It's, it's a line that touches it. It's tangible, it touches. It only touches it once, right? It doesn't go through it twice, it just hits it once, and then it hits it once, and hits it once. And that's what we study, and by putting the limit in front of this, it turns into the, the slope of any tangent line on here. It's not the secant line anymore, it ends up being the tangent line. This one has a lot of tangent lines. I just drew that one, that one, and that one. Isn't this one a steep slope? Right? Isn't this tangent slope um, flatter? Isn't this one like in between the two? So you're gonna find the slopes of the tangent lines. That's what you're studying. And this is a flat slope. This has a slope of zero. This one has a positive slope. This one has a positive slope. This one's gonna probably have a negative slope, right? Positive, positive, zero, negative, negative. And that's all you do for the rest of the year is study these slopes. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. That is your major question right there, right? Okay, so part one, you have to recognize a given limit as a derivative. You have to recognize a given limit as a derivative. So it's kind of hard because I didn't know how to put the lines in there. So put the lines in there. As h <laughs> approaches zero, as h approaches zero. So all they want you to do is you need to recognize this on the AP test. You need to recognize that this is the formula to find the what? The derivative. And what is the original problem is all you're gonna write down after this. So on the worksheet, that's all you're doing is, this is f prime of x. 
this is f prime of x. It equals the limit as h approaches zero of some two of x plus h squared, da 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 da. They want you to go back to the original problem. What is the f of x in this problem? So, go back to the original formula. Isn't this f of x part of the formula? Isn't f of x the y or the original problem? So isn't this right here the original equation to start this whole thing out? So by looking over to the right on this problem, the f of x in this problem would be 2x to the second minus 3x. That's the original f of x. Okay, so this is the derivative. This is f prime of x. And they want you to go backwards. They want you to find the original f of x, because this is f prime of x. What's f of x? Well, the formula is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So f of x in this problem must be cosecant of x. And that's all you're doing on the worksheet for the first six problems. For the first six problems. Yeah, there's no numbers. I got that. Okay, are we good with part one? Okay, part two is the opposite way. The opposite way is they're going to give it to you in this form, and you have to put it into this form. Got it? Okay, so here we go. Express the derivative of each function as a limit. So you're, I'm going to write it up here. It's the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches 0. That's what we're trying to end up with. So here we go. Limit as h approaches 0. You're going to put not f of x in place of all the x's. You're going to put what in place of all the x's? What are you going to put in place of all the x's? x plus h, right? In place of all the x's, you're going to put x plus h, right? So you're going to put a 5. You're going to put a parentheses. And in place of x, what are you going to put in place of x? x plus h minus what's f of x in this problem? 5x all over h. Final answer. Good to go? That's it? Okay, let's do the next one. The limit. As h approaches 0, you're going to put a 3 down, but in place of all the x's in the first one, it's not x anymore. What's the x stand for? x plus h. So you're going to put a 3. Then what are you going to put down? x plus h raised to the second plus two parentheses. What are you going to put in place of x again? x plus h minus 1. So that's just the f of x plus h. Then what are you going to put? Minus, and I would put that part in parentheses because it all, the f, what does the f of x stand for in this problem? 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over h. Final answer. So if I went backwards like we did in part 1 really quickly, I'll be done with notes in probably 10 or 15, 10 minutes. If I told you, if this is the derivative and I told you to go backwards to f of x, isn't this that? Isn't this the f of x? Isn't this the f of x? Yep. So now let's go backwards to this one. Let's just see if we did it right. Here's the original, you guys. Do you see the original? So here's, we put a 2 on the outside. Did we put a 2 on the outside? In place of x, what did we put in place of x? x plus h, then what did you put up there? A squared, then there's a minus, then you put a 3. But instead of an x, what did you put there? x plus h, and then minus what the f of x stood for. Does that make sense now? The first page now makes sense, because I just went forward and backwards. And I never did this last year, and they were really confused on how that was all set up. 
I added this this year and I think it really helps. Now, the third step is to actually solve these problems. So, this one's easy. I don't even know how to solve this one that well, but I mean, I can, but the cosecant of x plus h minus the cosecant, that makes complete sense. So, okay, now we're gonna actually solve it, part three. How many do we have of those? Just one? Okay, just one. I have just one. Yeah, I just have one. Are you guys ready? Now we're gonna actually find the derivative. We're gonna find the derivative. Ready to find the derivative? Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put a little slash there which stands for derivative. And then I'm going to, I've never done this before, so because I'm new, I've never done this before, so I'm gonna write this out. Okay, so isn't this the derivative formula? Okay, so you guys ready to follow this? So we're gonna go, oops, I gotta do that. There it is. Okay, so um, the limit as h approaches zero of some f of x plus h. So you're gonna put a two down, so far so good. In the place of the x, what are you gonna put x? x plus h. What are you going to put after x plus h? Squared plus 3x. Whoops. It wasn't supposed to be 3x. It was supposed to be 3 parentheses x plus h. So far, so good? So that's that part. That's this part, right? Minus the f of x. And you should always put that in parentheses. Always. Just get used to doing it. What is the f of x in this problem? 2x squared plus b. All over... So far, so good? Okay, now we're going to sit and solve this because this is what we're going to... So now Monday is going to be so much easier to do the notes because I already taught this part of the notes. So this will go quicker on Monday. So, so I'm going to write out the two and I'm going to show all my work. X plus H, X plus H, plus 3, X plus H, minus 2, X squared plus 3, X all over h. So the only thing I did was take the x plus h and write it twice on that one. Well, I don't know. So now I'll skip a step and see if you like my skip a step. Isn't this x squared? But isn't it really 2x squared? Isn't this xh and xh, which is 2xh's, but it's really 4xh. So I am skipping a step there. And it's, not, it's h squared, but it's really 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 2x squared minus 3x all over h. How did you guys go back? Professors in college go twice as fast as anyone. That's cat. I didn't do much. I didn't do that much. I didn't do it. Are we good there? Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun telling the professor that someday. I will. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Don't call me. Are we ready to go? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So what do you have left? 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h all over h. And OK, the reason why we did, I forgot to tell you. Oh, I forgot one important thing after all of that. Oh, my God, I'm so happy. I had to do all this work because I had to do all this work because I couldn't put in place of all the h is 0 because why? That was the whole point of why I have to do all this work because you can't put zero in the denominator right now because it doesn't work, correct? Wow, was that a like wow? That was just crazy. Wow, okay. You thought I really skipped something crazy. 
by taking an H out of all three of them, don't they all have an H in common with each other? So can't you take an H out of everything? So you're left with 4X plus 2H plus 3. So far so good? Now we can finally plug the zero in by finding the limit as h approaches zero because we no longer have it in the denominator. That's the whole point of this. And you're going to be left with? Oh. This is called f prime of x. This formula, believe it or not, will find the slope of every tangent line on this graph. The slope of every tangent line on this graph. So, did you guys have Miss F for physics? Anybody have Miss F for physics? Yeah. Okay. So really quickly, Miss F taught you that if f of x equals three x squared, to find the derivative, you multiply those two. Six x. Is that what you learned? Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to this one. So, Justin, are you ready? What's the derivative of 2x squared? 4x. What's the derivative of 3x? 3. What's the answer? Why do we do all of this? I know. Just wait until we do it the shortcut way, but you have to do it the long way because it's on the AP test. You have to you have to work on the AP test. You have to you have to appreciate you Miss App never told you where that came from. That's where it came from. She just told you to multiply, subtract, multiply, She didn't show you where it came from. We only do this for two second sec sections and then we go to the easy stuff. So on the test, can you check it in your mind quickly? Yeah. 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 I like the two so sections. Well, yeah. yeah. Some of you have no clue what I just did, but. Well, yeah. 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 Well, I like this app way better. I'm just gonna you just wait. I I thought I had this app in like a like that. Oh, yeah. Here we go. You think your evidence are easy? Yeah. I'm getting on the toes. Do you want to do another one? Did you guys get how to do these? Yeah. Okay, we're done with North. 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 Oh no, I don't think I was recording. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I was about to blow my nose right on the.